The information in this video is for you if you are about to have or you're recovering from an operation for prolapse of your pelvic floor. That's when the sling muscles that support your bladder, bowel and vagina have slipped or descended. You might find it useful to share this information with your family and friends. The type of pelvic floor repair operation you're having or have had may be an anterior vaginal repair where the front wall of your vagina has prolapsed, a posterior vaginal repair if the back wall of your vagina has prolapsed. You can find more information on prolapse in the patient information section of the RCOG website. You may be having or have had a pelvic floor repair operation alongside a hysterectomy if your uterus, that's your womb, has prolapsed into your vagina. If so, you may find another video in this series called Recovering Well, information for you after a vaginal hysterectomy useful. Your surgery choices will depend on your personal circumstances and will be discussed with you by your gynaecologist before your operation. This information, together with any other information you've been given, will help you to understand your choices and the operation itself. This information gives general advice based on women's experiences and expert opinion. Every woman has different needs and recovers in different ways. Your own recovery will depend upon how fit and well you are before your operation, the reason you're having a pelvic floor operation, and the exact type of repair that you have done, as well as how smoothly the operation goes and whether there are any complications or not. What can I expect after a pelvic floor operation? So how long will I have to stay in hospital? In most instances, you'll be admitted to hospital on the day of your operation. You may be able to go home within 24 hours or, depending on your circumstances, you might need to stay in hospital for two to three days. So what are the after effects of a general anaesthetic? Most modern anaesthetics are short lasting. You shouldn't have or suffer from any after effects for more than a day after your operation. During the first 24 hours, you may feel more sleepy than usual and your judgment may be impaired. You're likely to be in hospital during the first 24 hours, but if not, you should have an adult with you during this time and you shouldn't drive or make any important decisions. So will passing you around be difficult afterwards? You may have a catheter, that's a tube in your bladder, to allow drainage of your urine. This is usually for up to 24 hours after your operation, until you're easily able to walk to the toilet and empty your bladder. If you do have problems passing urine, you may need to have a catheter for a few more days. After this, if you had an anterior repair, you may notice a change in the flow of your urine and that passing urine is slower and takes longer. This should settle with time. Will I have any scars? An operation for prolapse of the pelvic floor is done through your vagina, so scars will usually be out of sight. Will I need the stitches removed? Your stitches will not need to be removed, uh, they're dissolvable. You may notice part of a stitch or a stitch coming away after a few days or maybe even after a few weeks. This is normal and it's nothing to worry about. You may have a pack, a length of gauze like a large tampon in your vagina after the operation to reduce the risk of bleeding. A nurse will remove this after your operation while you're still in hospital. Check with your nurse that this has been done before you go home. Will I have a lot of bleeding? You can expect to have some vaginal bleeding for two to three weeks after your operation. This is like a light period and is red or brown in colour. You should use sanitary towels rather than tampons as tampons can increase the risk of developing an infection. Will it be painful? You can expect pain and discomfort in your lower abdomen, that's your tummy, for at least the first few days after your operation. When you do go home from hospital, you should be provided with painkillers for the pain you're experiencing. Sometimes painkillers that contain codeine or dihydrocodeine can make you sleepy, slightly sick and constipated. If you do need to take these medications, try to eat some extra fruit and fibre to reduce the chances of becoming constipated and take plenty of water. Taking painkillers as prescribed will reduce your pain and that will enable you to get up sooner, stand up straight and move around, all of which speed up your recovery and help prevent the formation of blood clots in your legs or your lungs. Will I be able to eat and drink after the operation? After your operation, you may have a drip in your arm to provide you with fluids. When you're able to drink again, the drip will be removed. You'll be offered a drink of water or a cup of tea or something light to eat. If you're not hungry initially, then you should drink the fluid and try eating something later on. To help your bladder function, make sure the fluid you drink is mainly water. You should limit your intake of caffeine found in tea, coffee and some fizzy drinks, as this will irritate your bladder. 
make sure that you drink small amounts of fluid at regular intervals throughout the day. Drinking less frequently can make your urine concentrated and this can also irritate your bladder. What about washing and showering? You should be able to have a shower or a bath the day after your operation. There is a small risk of blood clots forming in the veins in your legs and pelvis. This is called deep vein thrombosis. That can happen after any operation. These clots can travel to the lungs, that's called a pulmonary embolism, which could be serious. You can reduce the risk of these clots by being as mobile as you can as early as you can after your operation by doing exercises when you're resting. For example, pump each foot up and down briskly for 30 seconds by moving your ankle. Move each foot in a circular motion for 30 seconds. Bend and straighten your legs, one leg at a time, three times for each leg. You may also be given other measures to reduce the risk for clot developing, particularly if you are overweight or if you have other health issues. Uh, these may include injections of daily heparin, that's a blood thinning agent. You may need to continue having these injections daily when you go home. Your doctor will advise you on the length of time you should have these for. You may need to have graduated compression stockings, which should be worn day and night until your movement has improved and your mobility is no longer significantly reduced. And sometimes we have special boots that inflate and deflate, and those are worn while in hospital. Will I be given any exercises to do after the operation? You will be given advice and information about exercises to help you recover, and about ways to move easily and rest comfortably. You should be given written information on this. The ward physiotherapist may also visit you after your operation to show you some exercises and have a discussion with you about how to progress with getting out of bed and mobilising. The physiotherapist will also advise you on how to do pelvic floor muscle exercises. If you're still on the cervical screening programme, you should continue to have screening, that's smear tests, after your repair. If you have also had a hysterectomy, you should check with your GP or gynaecologist whether you need to continue having smears or not. Will I feel tired after the operation? You may feel much more tired than usual after your operation as your body's using a lot of energy to heal itself. You may need to take a nap during the day for the first few days. Sometimes this feeling can come upon you suddenly. I've heard of something called enhanced recovery. What is it? Your hospital may offer an enhanced recovery program, ERP. It aims to get you back to full health as quickly as possible after a planned operation. If you take an active role in your treatment and are supported by your GP and the Hospital Enhanced Recoveries team, stress is caused by an operation are reduced and you'll get better faster. Ask your gynaecologist whether your hospital has this programme and for more information about it. Is there anything that may slow down my recovery? It can take longer to recover from a pelvic floor operation. If you have had health problems before your operation, for example, women with diabetes may heal more slowly and be more prone to infection. If you smoke, smokers are at increased risk of getting a chest or wound infection during their recovery and smoking can delay the healing process. For women who are overweight, it can take longer to recover from the effects of the anaesthetic and there is a higher risk of complications such as infection and thrombosis, that's clots. It could also take you longer to recover if there were any complications during your operation. Recovering after an operation is a very personal experience. If you're following all of the advice that you've been given, but you don't think you're at the stage you ought to be, then speak to your GP. When should I seek medical advice after my operation? While most women recover well after a pelvic floor operation, complications can occur, as with any procedure. You should seek medical advice from your GP, the hospital where you had your operation, NHS 111, or NHS 24 if you experience any of the following. Burning or stinging when you pass urine frequently. This may be due to a urine infection. Treatment is with a course of antibiotics. Vaginal bleeding that becomes heavy or smelly. If you're also feeling unwell and have a temperature, that's a fever, this may be due to an infection or a small collection of blood in the vagina. Treatment can be with a course of antibiotics in this case as well. If you had a hysterectomy at the time of your repair, the infection or blood collection can be at the top of your vagina. This is called the vaginal vault, and the collection of blood is called a hematoma. Again, treatment for this is normally with a course of antibiotics. But occasionally, you may need to be admitted to the hospital for the antibiotics to be administered intravenously. That's into a vein. And very rarely, this collection may sometimes need to be drained. A painful red, swollen or hot leg, or difficult weight-bearing may be due to deep vein thrombosis. If you have shortness of breath, 
chest pain, or cough up blood, it could be a sign that a blood clot has traveled to your lungs, a pulmonary embolism. If you have these symptoms, you should seek medical help immediately. You should usually allow four to six weeks after your operation for scars to heal. It's then safe to have sex as long as you feel comfortable. If you experience any discomfort or dryness, you might like to try a vaginal lubricant. You can buy these from your local pharmacy. When will I be fit to return to work? Everybody recovers at a different rate, so when you're ready to return to work will depend on the type of work you do, the number of hours and how you get to and from work. You may experience more tiredness than normal after any operation, so your return to work should be like your return to physical activity, with a gradual increase in the hours and activities at work. If you have an occupational health department, they'll be able to advise on this. Some women are fit to work after two to three weeks and will not be harmed by this if there are no complications from the surgery. Many women are able to go back to normal work after three to four weeks if they've been building up their levels of physical activity at home. Returning to work can actually help your recovery by getting you back into your normal routine again. Some women who are off work for longer periods start to feel isolated and depressed. You don't have to be symptom free before you go back to work. In fact, it's normal to have some discomfort as you're adjusting to working life. It might be possible for you to return to work by doing shorter hours or lighter duties and building up gradually over a period of time. Consider starting partway through your normal working week so you have a planned break quite soon. You might also wish to see your GP or your occupational health department before you go back and do certain jobs. Discuss this with them before your operation. You should not feel pressurised by your family, friends or your employer to return to work before you feel ready. Equally, you don't need your GP's permission to go back to work. The decision is yours.